first-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the 1991 oil market. We were making new highs at $41 a barrel. Uh, I mentioned there was a three drive pattern. I went short at 41. I was getting my hair cut. My daughter called me and said, turn on CNN. And it was midnight over there for eight hours difference. And they were lighting up Baghdad. It looked like the 4th of July. And bombs were going off anywhere. And the war had started. And, of course, everybody expected crude oil to be up a lot and gold to be up a lot and stocks to be down a lot. Well, the war only lasted 36 hours, and uh, that, was the, that was the big key. Well, later on that evening, this was 4 o'clock, I started calling every five minutes for five and a half hours to get through to the New York office of uh, the old Drexel Burnham group, Goldberg Brothers, to find out what was going on. Remember, we didn't have overnight markets in the US, they did in Europe, because Europe, it was over there midnight, it was in the morning, but they did have overnight markets in crude oil and gold, nothing in stocks. And I asked Richie, I said, you know, where's the gold? He said, uh, 25 lower. And I said, limit down, and he said, yeah. And I said, crude oil, I said, where's crude oil? He said, there's no bids. And I said, Richie, come on, where's, where's it at, 39, 38, where's it at? And he said, no, there's no bids, Larry. He said, there hasn't been a trade, and we're trading at $28 a barrel. I said, you mean we're down $13 a barrel and there's not been a trade? He said, that's absolutely right. Well, finally, uh, oil did open at around 15 lower, rallied about $4, and then proceeded to go to $11 a barrel in January of the following year. The reason why I'm trying to bring this history back to yourself, folks, these things, these charts that we look at, <laughs> believe it or not, they have some predictive ability and they follow the market and the news. They know what's going on. So when it's over, it's over. And someday here soon in the stock market, we're going to have one hell of a rally. I talked to Tim Boss last night, and uh, he is not going to be able to come on maybe till the Thursday or Friday of this week. And we'll be able to see if we can get him on. Uh, but he's had a, he's in the midst of that flood down there in Florida. Plus, he moved. So he's just you know, he just got a lot of things going, but he'll get back to us. You remember, he, he pointed out the importance of the September 28th period, and then we had the rally, and then he, he also mentioned to look for a low sometime around the 20th of October, 20th to 21st of October. Those of you that listen here at TFNN, last week we had Stan Harley on. Stan was looking for pretty much the same thing. One is looking at it on the eyes of an astrologer, the other one is looking at it the eyes of a, an engineer who happens to be a mathematician. That's Stan Harley. So when they come together, that makes it very, very interesting. Now, on Wednesday, we're going to have Bill Meridian of uh, Cycles Research on, and Bill's also looking at the end of October for something pretty significant to happen. Because when this, this short covering thing does happen, it's going to be a really big one. The news is so bearish now. I'm, I'm surprised the Dow Jones isn't down 1,000 points, given the fact that what happened with China and some of the other things that we go on. The U.S. dollar is still screaming. The euro's collapsing, expecting. But more than that, folks, more than that, there's a market out there that we've been bearish on for a long time. And, folks, now the cat's out of the bag. I mean, this thing is really getting nasty, and that is our treasury bonds. And Treasury notes, I'll get this up here so you can see it here one second, and then we'll be able to talk about it a little bit. Remember, uh, uh, we've been very bearish this for several years because of the big ABCD that was up here. And then you can see the 1-3-5 the pattern that formed here. Now, remember, this is a weekly, and our target on this was 128. Folks, we're, we're at a 123 handle right now. So whenever we get this bottom right in here, we are going to have a pretty good rally. 
it looks like it could get to 117 is what it's looking like. The Treasury notes looking the same, and the, the rates are just going skyrocket because they've got to be able to control some of this stuff in the, in the marketplace. The only way they can do that is through the bond market, but it, unfortunately, the bond market is collapsing. There's where the problem. The problem is in the debt market. Stop and think where stocks are, folks. Look where, look how, look how much bonds have come down, folks. <laughs> we're from 100 and, 176. And, you know, we're trading at 123. That's a huge. That's 40 percent of the value of the bond. Hello, operator. Same thing is happening in England. Okay, the same thing is happening in uh, Italy, and the same thing is happening. Several South American countries are having the same problems. So there's the problem. It's in the equity markets partly, but the big part is in the interest rate markets, and that's why these things are so uh, far down, and it's going to be more difficult for the Fed to even do anything if they want to do anything, because as the price of the bonds go lower, that means people, when they convert them, they have to convert them back to dollars, which is strong, and so they can buy these bonds back at a much smaller uh, smaller price than, than they issued them at. But the problem is, if the interest rates keep going higher, which they do, because when the bond drops, interest rates go up, they have to pay more interest on that bond if it's a coupon bond like the 6% bonds are. Okay, anyway, that's what we're watching here. Uh, but uh, we're watching that time frame of October 22nd. Remember, we haven't even taken out the June lows yet in the, uh, I don't know if we've done it in the NASDAQ. I know we were really close earlier this morning. But uh, when we take that out, I think it's going to make it apparent to some folks that, yes, yeah, well, maybe it could be. Oh, I've got to show you something else that what I wanted to show you. Doggone it. Here is the stock market. Uh, this is where we were on uh, January the 17th. Let me get this up here to see it here. It's going to be because it's so big. There's the, there's the little pullback right here. That was January 17th, right at the eclipse of New Moon. We were setting at a 61% retracement in the Dow Jones and the S&P. I was doing the S&P, and uh, it was just absolutely perfect. It was a, a Wednesday, and uh, I bought it and actually had about a five or six-point profit in it at the close. And remember, this is when it was uh, trading at $500 a point. So uh, what happened was when they, they came in in the morning, the next morning, on the 18th of January, the Dow Jones gapped up. Remember, there was no overnight uh, trading in the uh, uh, in these uh, these things that we have now. There, that was way long before was before the internet. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's what happened. Was anyway gapped up, and that gap is still unfilled. And you can see we went all the way up to uh, 35,000. What I'm concerned about here in the markets now is this liquidity factor that we have going on. If you remember, Jeff Huge was on last week, and he mentioned the fact that these companies have been buying their stock all the way up, propping the price of the stock up. But if they have to start selling to you know, get capital, oh dear, that's going to be a really bad thing. So liquidity is drying up a bit, and that makes it a little bit of a little bit of a different situation here of what we're looking at. So. Let's. Uh, we got some other things we've got to cover. We got to cover the DAX, and we, we need to cover the gold and the silver very close. We're going to have some tremendous buying opportunities soon, folks. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, since we're talking about the NASDAQ, I want to bring it up to uh, let us all take a look at it. We've taken out the lows of the uh, last week. Uh, you can see here we did take out the lows. Uh, we had to rally here the other night. Uh, excuse me, that was on Wednesday, and then we came down and broke really hard. But, folks, you know, we talk a lot about that pattern that we like, which is the 382 pattern. So all I'm going to do now is go down to a smaller time frame here in the NASDAQ and show you what actually happened today. So bear with me here and we'll be right back with you and I hope this is it and here it is. Remember this is as of Sunday night and all day today. This is in the, you, you'll see this as of the opening post. That's where the opening we were having that rally. Uh, no guest today Al. Uh, tomorrow I'm not sure I haven't been able to check. I know I have Bill Meridian is scheduled on Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow I don't uh, I'm supposed to have Tim Boss, but he's just swamped with the flood and all that stuff. Anyway, that's a chart of the 382 on the Nasdaq. You can see it had a pretty nice move. And we've got a guest today, Mr. Z. John Cheney from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is in the house. John, how are you? Larry, I'm doing very well. Um, glad to hear you're doing well, and we'll uh, be sending some white light out there to Tim Boss. Hope that he's got some helping hands to help him recover. He does. He's hanging in there pretty good, buddy. Thank you for asking. Excellent. Uh, Larry, I, I called you for a couple of reasons. Uh, one was to uh, uh, just discuss on air with you an observation I made over the weekend, uh, which uh, you and I have talked about here. But before doing that, uh, just to complement the uh, points you made on liquidity concerns, uh, in the Tiger's Den just a minute ago, I posted uh, the the yield on the German Bund, the monthly chart going back 15 years or so, mm -hmm. and the same phenomenon in the rising rates, rising yields that you see in in uh, the U.S., in Britain, in Italy, to which you just referred. You have the same thing going on in Germany. The thing that is noteworthy there that I just point out to you and your listeners and reinforce to myself is that back in uh, 2019, the yield, the, excuse me, the yield on the bond went negative, 
and stayed negative all of 2020 and 2021 and now has screamed higher. And I just mentioned uh, that to say there is there are so many uh, debt securities in Europe that are so dramatically underwater now because all those market participants, pension funds, government actors, and the like, were buying those instruments at negative yields and now have just, frankly, catastrophic capital losses, uh, which Mm -hmm. my suspicion is, is just going to wreak havoc with things and only in the fullness of time will we quite understand exactly what that was and what has gone on. John, I agree with you 100%. When you look at the long-term bond market and long-term treasury note market, you know, we topped a year and a half ago, almost well, a little more than two years ago. And now we are we're in a free fall now. We don't know how far these bonds are going to go to the downside because there's a giant unknown out there because there's $31 trillion in debt. You know, a lot of it's underwritten by the uh, Treasury notes and bonds. And if these start to fail, that thing on the front of our bill that says, in God we trust, might have to be changed to in God we trusted. And then that's when the proverbial, that's when the, I love it. Yes, that's right. Well, that's when the proverbial poop will hit the fan if that happens. But you're correct. I'm going to post, stay with us here for just a second, John. I'm going to post a chart in the den just to show you where we are with this because uh, we've never seen spikes like this. Uh, This is only the fifth time in history where this going back the last 40 years. In the last 40 years, it's only happened four times. I'll get it up here and take a look at it. If you look at this first one on the far left, that was in um, in August of 1985. That's when they had the Plaza Accord in uh, you know New York City when they all the G6. It was G6 at the time came together and said, well, the dollar stops going up here, and they changed a whole bunch of stuff, and you can see that's what happened. But there's been other times along in here, but this thing has shot up so fast. This has been the fastest rise in the history of the world. I mean, we have never seen rises like this in interest rate. John, 8% is the interest rate now for mortgages here in Tucson. We were three and a half just a few months ago. And, uh, you know, people, can't, they can't afford to buy a house because, you know, it basically doubles the price of the house or the mortgage. And that that's what uh, that's what's killing it. So those things are not good for the economy. But, you know, maybe it'll all change. We'll wake up tomorrow and Putin will surrender and become a servant to uh, Ukraine. Who knows? But, uh, boy, there's a lot of weird stuff going on out there. Nothing like I've ever seen. And I thought I'd seen everything. Uh, indeed. We're seeing something new every day. Uh, Larry, um, in keeping with uh, a ABCD a projection target that you have given on the S&P 500 for weeks and maybe a month or two now, mm-hmm. down at the uh, roughly 3,150 level, uh, in keeping with that, I uh, posted in the uh, Tiger's Den and uh, shared it with you this weekend a uh, development that I haven't seen people share, and that is the very tight correlation of the S&P 500 to total U.S. commercial bank reserves. Uh, Over uh, uh, going back to the great financial crisis and coming out of that from 2009, excuse me, from 2009 into 2020, the stock market was incredibly tightly correlated to the increase in size of the Federal Reserve balance sheet as it was doing QE like crazy. Uh, That changed, and what I observed, I was doing some study and got a note from uh, a colleague and then investigated the data myself, and saw that in 2021 and 2022 here, the S&P is incredibly tightly correlated, not so much with the Federal Reserve balance sheet any longer, but with reserves held at the Federal Reserve by commercial banks. And during 2021, those reserve balances were increasing peaked out late 2021, 
and have been in dramatic decline since. Now, of course, uh, as uh, as I mentioned just in a note that I shared with you this weekend, you know, the financial system is uh, a highly complex system, and the major players of the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. commercial banks, perhaps the Bank of International Settlements and others, all play a role in that system. And mm-hmm. for reasons I don't entirely comprehend, uh, reserve balances at commercial banks held by, yes, reserve balances at commercial banks held at the Federal Reserve have uh, become tightly correlated to the s and So I had to share that with you. John, thank you very much, buddy. We'll see you again soon. And keep those cards and letters coming in, pal. You bet. John Cherbany, folks. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Larry Pesavano for TFNN. i got to tell you a little human interest story, folks. Uh, going back to October of 1969, I met uh, Los Angeles, California, and I'm at Cedar Sinai Medical Center, and I'm in the delivery room, and my wife was getting ready to give birth to our little daughter, the second one, Laren, and she was due any time now, and I was in the room getting ready to help deliver, and the little sweetie came out, and uh, I cleaned her up. I gave her her first bath, and we use baby. They don't use water and stuff. They use baby oil, and then you dry them off really nice, and you put a little powder on them and stuff, and I wrapped her in a little blanket and took her out. My mother was in the waiting room. She came in from Terre Haute to take care of uh, Jilly and uh, and also help the wife and stuff. So uh, she was there, and I had a $50 bet on the Mets and the Baltimore Orioles in the World Series 1969, and by golly, 
I lost the bet as the Mets beat them in five games. And it, the game ended while uh, Laren was in the delivery room. And so I have her in my arms. I walk out into the waiting room there. And there was my mother. And I said, here she is. She's a beauty. I said, but she's not as cute as Jill. And the next thing I heard was this terrible sound on the side of my face. My mother hit me so hard. She slapped me so hard. Everybody heard it. I mean, I was I was totally shocked. And she says to me in Italian, you're going to be very sorry you said this. And then she said a few other words that I can't mention here on the air. And I said, oh, my God, Mom, I said, I didn't mean that. I said, I'm, you know, I, first of all, it was a very emotional day. In the morning, I got a phone call from Eli Lilly's home office, and I got a huge promotion to a product manager for cephalosporin antibiotics. So we have, I was going to have to move the family back from California back to Indianapolis. Uh, and then the Mets, was, the Mets were playing the Orioles, and then I had this beautiful baby delivered. Well, my mom really got even because 14 years later, my little daughter, Laren, was picked as the Noxema cover girl for all the uh, stuff going on in Southern California. She was on billboards and buses and everything in her little uh, bikini and stuff, and it was uh, a big deal. She made $15,000 on that, and they, they never let me forget it. Every time this time of the year, do you remember what you did? And I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they rubbed my nose in it, and I should have had it rubbed in. I didn't mean it anyway, but... That's uh, that's what basically happened. So anyway, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. My kids still they still follow follow Dodger baseball. They just can't get it out of their system. So I'm um, so I'm certainly glad of that. Okay, let's talk about some markets, folks. Um, I posted a chart of the Dow E Mini up there. We rallied 350 points overnight, folks, from being down 200 to be up 150. It stopped exactly at the 382 retracement. And if we take a look at the E-mini e S&P, let's just get it up here, and you'll be able to see we did exactly the same thing in the S&P. Let me get it up here a little bit differently. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention here is because, remember, the two things that we have in strong trending markets to help us move is one is the 3A2, and the second one is the ABCD. Now, here's the S&P here on Friday. You see we had that 3A2 retracement to the exact price up here. Uh, 3720. Look at this. We break all the way down. We we don't make a 382 here. You see how we miss it by about 20 points, but we make a in this red box. You can see the little ABCD right there. There it is, and we're already breaking down. You know, way into this level right here. Once we take this out, I think the market's going to start to accelerate. But you know, that's just a guess, and you know, guesses don't count here, except in tiddlywinks, horseshoes, and hand grenades. So. Uh, let's watch that as we go through and look at some of these others. Now, there's some other markets that are uh, the one market that we've been watching strongly on Friday. If I remember, I pointed this out to you that there was a great deal of support in the wheat down here at the 78 percent level, folks. And today, believe it or not, we hit. Believe it or not, we went above this, folks. We went all the way up to uh, 946. Here we are. That's a dollar, almost a dollar, 80, 80 cents a bushel in two days. Somebody is starting to buy a lot of grain, folks, if they think something's going on over the Crimea or whatever it is. All I know is that is acting extremely good. So if you're in that one, hang on, bite your nails, and you know, you'll be able to see whether it's going to go uh, much higher or not. So we want to, to watch it uh, very, very closely. I think it's important that we do that. Now, I want to bring this uh, next one up with the NASDAQ here because uh, this is where the problem lies because of what's going on in the computer chip industry. Folks, computer chips have been dropping for months and months and months. Just look at the chart of AMD and Intel. They've been going down. They've been in a bear market. So today they wake up and say, oh, they're not going to be selling any to China. Hmm, that must be bearish. So now there's more coming in. Folks, these these charts have predictive natures. This is why you know Andrew Lowe wrote his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street. They don't repeat all the time, but they repeat most of the time. And nobody's going to be right all the time. So all you got to do is pick the ones that you want to trade. And as Warren Buffett said, the two major rules is don't lose any money is rule number one. And rule number two is don't break rule number one. Well, you've got to take a risk somewhere, and that's what it's all about. And that leads me to something that I really think you folks ought to listen to, okay? And give me one second here. Oh, where are you, Mr. J-O-B? 
Oh, I got this thing written down and everything. I just can't find it. Give me a break, please. I have it. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. I've got such a great quote from Steve Jobs. And by golly, I know it's here somewhere and I cannot find it. Well, well, I keep looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. I can't find it. T and I was just reading it just a little yesterday. Son of a God, that just frost the top of my head. Anyway, let's uh, – all right. I don't want to spend – let's move over to the gold market, something I do know a little bit about. Here's the gold, folks. This is a monthly chart. If you'll remember here, we've been bearish on this for quite some time. We still think we're going to get down below 1,600 very shortly. But this is the monthly chart, and I wanted to show you certain things. Look at this monthly range in here. You see when the market broke the monthly range, how the bias was to the downside? Look what we've done now, folks. We've broken the monthly range now on the the uh, the gold. This is this is it. very, very bearish. You know, that's the thing that you got to remind us. Once these things break these, they have a tendency to be very, very bearish. And what do we know? Johnny's raising his hand back there. Yes, Johnny. Johnny's back with us, folks. It didn't work out flipping burgers over at McDonald's. He ate as many as he could, and then he got tired. So he's back trading. Yes, Johnny, we see your little sign, the 382. And let's just see how you would have done today if you would have been doing something in the old gold today. And we try to alert everybody to watch these things all the time because when they occur, and when they occur, they can lead you pretty good. Look at this, folks. Right there, your 382 retracement market rally, $17 breaks. Look at Sunday night, folks. We're lower. We rally up to the 382 off of that primary high here on Friday. And look at this. It just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. So keep it keep it in your armamentarium for when you run out of bullets uh, use your uh, use the last bullets on the 382 is what i would suggest i believe if i'm not mistaken by the old clock on the wall that we have a pretty uh, interesting uh, commercial coming up here in 10987564321 and when we get back from this we are going to take a look at the FTSE and the DAX and we have a couple requests for things to look at and we want to look at the favorite of the Lone Ranger, High Ho Silver. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, I posted the four-minute chart of the Dow E-mini today. As you can see here at the very top, we were having a three-drive to a top pattern right up in here. Oh, excuse me, that's a butterfly pattern, not a three-drive to a top pattern. There's your A, B, C, and D. You break down, you rally up to just about, just a little over 382. Then you come down and complete the first A, B, C, D, and then you rally up. You can see the A, B, C, D in between. That's the 382 off of the high, folks. A perfect Gartley at the 382. You come down, you make the final target at 3601. The low was 3600. And now you can see we're rallying again. We're right up near the 382 retracement on this here at uh, 3625. Uh, that should be it if it's bearish. It shouldn't get any higher than that. But if we start moving higher, and if we start moving higher, it could get a lot higher because if it breaks that, it tells you that that ABCD that took a good, you know, six and a half hours to form, uh, four and a half hours to form, uh, could be a pretty substantial bottom. I don't think that it is, but again, I'm just guessing, and guessing doesn't, you know, do much for you. So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind as we're watching some of these things here. Uh, unfold here uh, this morning. Okay, let me get back here. I'm trying to find out where I am in the scheme of things, and I've lost one of my charts. How did I ever do that? Now, that's not fair. Son of a gun, we're going to have to figure out what to do next year, so I'm not going to worry about it very much. Let's get back and talk about, uh, hold on, just about the FTSE. Uh, several people have asked me about that because they have friends in the U.K., and we will get that FTSE chart up here. Looks very similar to what we're watching here. Ah, uh, not good, not good. Got to remember to hit the right button, Larry. Okay, here's where we are. And here is the FTSE. As you can see, it's been in a downtrend. And, uh, you know, it looks like the targets are a little bit lower down in here, which is about normal. You can see the big one right here, just to write exact, the 3A2. Even the FTSE can speak Italian, and it sees the 3A2 right here. That tells us we're going to come down a little bit lower here uh, in, the, in the FTSE. Now, the next one we want to take a look at is we're going to go over to Germany, where they make the uh, German cars, including Volkswagen, Porsche, and the BMW. Let's get this up. And Mercedes-Benz. Don't want to forget the big daddy rabbit in the room. And we'll get up here, and here is the chart of the DAX. And you can see it's been much weaker than the uh, – why, I don't know, because you would think the European one, the FTSE, would be lower. But the difference is FTSE is really international stocks. There's very little – there are very few London stocks on the FTSE index, even though it's traded there. But you can see here, this is a big 135 pattern here, folks, on this uh, – I believe it is a four-hour chart. No, it's an hourly chart. And uh, you can see here that's a 135 pattern. We came down and tested the 61% retracement, and that's holding okay. But given everything that's going on, folks, uh, you just got to be really, really careful in here because these markets, uh, boy, they have the tendency. We haven't seen really fear come in, folks, even with all the negative things that are going on today. You look at Bloomberg, and it's just oh, just a normal day. Stocks drifting lower, and they are. 
But you would think that the people would be a little bit more concerned given all the things that are happening. Now, if you remember, I'm going to bring this up again because I think it's important. And we're going to have Tim Boston this week, hopefully Thursday or Friday, if not next week for sure. And he's going to go over this sequence of events that he pointed out to us way back on September the 26th. Because, boys and girls, this was exactly what was happening in our market at that time. In 1987, the market bottomed here on the 28th. It was an eclipse. It rallied up into October the 2nd, okay, that seven-day rally. That's what we just completed, folks, just completed back there on October the uh, October the 4th. And here we are, you know, a week later, and then they're wondering why the thing. See, we haven't broken below this key level right here. See, once we break below that key level, that's when it, that's when the selling should start. And if it's correct, and if it's time sequences from low to high to low to high, it's going to be 34 days from the high we made back here. All you got to do is me measure what those highs are, go out 34 days, and where is it going to reach, folks? Blackjack, 21st of October. So that's where the, we're looking at. And there happens to be eclipse at that time. I believe yeah, it's a lunar eclipse at that time, so that's going to be a big one. So let's uh, let's watch this. It's going to be interesting. But anyway, Tim's going to explain the whole ramifications of why the planets were lined up exactly like they were. I mean, he said as close as you can possibly get to a, you know, to a Swiss watch, that same thing was happening this year, and it's happening. And that means if it's correct, and so far it has been, we're not going to bottom for another two weeks. And that'll take us right down to October the, uh, uh, let's see, two weeks would be yeah, October the 20th, around 21st. So that's uh, 11 days from today. So that's what we'll be watching 11 days from today. Let's look at that one. That would be the 21st. And that, oh, that's a Friday. That'll be a triple witching probably. Yeah, that's going to be a, that'll be a bonsai day. So we got to watch that one, you know, very, very closely here. So I hope you stay tuned to when we have Tim Bost, he will explain to us again, you know, exactly, you know, what he was doing and why. And I think it'll be interesting, uh, interesting for everybody. Now, I want to just get back for just a second here and uh, talk about the silver market because uh, we've been involved with that for a while. I want to get this up here. You'll be able to see this. We did this on the air while it was happening. So I hope that a uh, few of you remember that some of these patterns work, and when they do, they work very well. You'll notice that right here was the 1.618 expansion uh, on this four-hour chart. And not only that, it was also the 382 on the long-term monthly, folks, going back three years. It stopped exactly at the same price, 2130. The high was 2131. And you'll notice we broke down to the 382 the first time. Then we rallied right up to the 61% retracement. And what we've done now is completed to an ABCD. Very, very strong support coming in here. So far, it's not holding. But if we can hold this level somewhere in this level of the 61% retracement, down around 18 bucks, it's got a chance to be something really, really special. I'm watching this one you know, like a hawk, because I think the long side is the, the side to be, but uh, haven't triggered the buy point as of yet, but we're getting closer and closer. This will also be a 20-minute line, folks. When you draw the line from the far left through this high and over to here, that's going to get you right into that level right here, and that level is right about, I think, uh, 15, uh, right, just a little under $15 uh, an ounce. Uh, in the silver. So uh, that's really, really important. It's also a fact that this thing maybe have topped for a long time and it's going to break and gold's going to go down to, to 1100 or something. That's also, also the possibility. So remind ourselves that, you know, these things are not etched in stone. We're just dealing in probabilities for heaven's sakes. And that's be really all you can do. So, wow, we had one heck of a rally while I was gone here. I see the S&P got all the way up to uh, 3940 boy that's a heck of a run here this is great it went through the it went through the 382 like it didn't even exist boy here's one here folks we'll be right back i'll show you this one in just a second
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're going to have a nice lesson here. Here is the, the you can see the three drive to a bottom pattern right down here. On this uh, four minute, I think it's an eight minute chart. There's drive one, drive two, drive three. There was your 382. I marked this while we were talking just a little while ago, and look how quickly it went through, folks. This is a losing trade. I mean, you go right through the 382. Stop has got to be right above the 50% level, as you can see. We're above the 61% retracement now. So this could be a pretty substantial, well, it already is a substantial bottom because the Dow's already ra rallied 350 points. And the S&P's rallied 40-some handles. So that's why it stops her for protection, folks. These markets do not repeat 100%. They only repeat about 65 or 70 percent of the time. And remember, it's not chaos because within the chaos or non-random patterns, they do repeat, but they do fail. And you got to remember, those are the ones you want to pay attention to. It's not about how money you make, how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. And I am going to do a special on this uh, thing for G uh, Steve Jobs here. Uh, coming in here tomorrow because it's really a spectacular. It was his last words, folks, at the last iPhone meeting right before he passed away. 
and uh, I think you're going to really enjoy what his thoughts are on what was coming in the next life because it was it was really really super cool and I think you well you'll enjoy it uh, quite a bit now tomorrow I don't have a guest yet I'm still trying to get someone and Wednesday we will have Bill Meridian he'll be on for the full show uh, he's got a lot of things on the gold, the interest rate, stocks, and currencies and stuff. So that'll be really, really good. Cycles Research out of Vienna, Austria. Uh, then on Thursday or Friday, I still have a chance of getting Tim Boss, depending how things go down in Florida. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And do something nice for your neighbors, folks, because things are tough out there. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow, and may God bless. Mm -hmm.